right. Jennifer Dunlop says, getting in late, maybe past the time for questions. I was wondering if there are, well, uh, here you go, Jennifer. Uh, getting in. I was wondering if there are hormonal phenotypes that would predict whether a woman will have a cycle without ovulating or simply lose her cycle altogether than under stress. Does it relate to body fat? So why would a woman have no cycle? Why would a woman have an anovulatory cycle? So remember, cortisol is very, very, very um, uh, potent in the brain. And so if the body perceives itself as under stress, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, environmental, it doesn't matter, then reproduction is not its primary focus anymore um is and and i heard this i had been thinking this for a long time i didn't know how to eloquently say it and then dr felice skirsch said it on stage one day she said ladies whether you want to or not like i'm sorry but you were put here to, to reproduce biology is what you do now obviously not all women do and a lot of women in fact are trying to avoid it but that's what the body is set up for yeah. so when you are under a lot of stress and under body fat under body weight um falls in that category, then you, your brain says, this is a stressor. This is not a good time to get pregnant. I'm going to take away her ovulation and, or I'm going to make her cycle late and, or I'm going to take her cycle away completely altogether. And so I, we hear that a lot with women who have gone through a lot of stress, job change, divorce, death. Um, sometimes it can even be like just uh, flying time zone changes can be a huge one for changing your cycle. But definitely when you're under body weight, you don't make the hormone leptin like you should. And leptin is a big um, hormone for letting the brain know she's of a normal weight. She can carry a baby safely and he in a healthy manner. So go ahead and make her ovulate. So if you are underweight, um, then oftentimes the body says, nope, not healthy, not strong enough, not able enough. Let's protect her, take away ovulation and or take away the cycle completely. And then when the body fat comes back up, you see this all the time in like gymnasts or my CrossFitters who stop CrossFit or my chronic marathon runners, you know, they'll stop it. And um, the stress goes down, the weight goes up to a, a more perceived healthy weight by the brain. And then they can ovulate and have a period regardless of having a baby is your end goal it doesn't matter um but that's how the brain works yeah my my uh model for understanding this is uh is pretty similar so i i feel like um fertility is largely regulated by the question of can i afford energetically to invest in the you know fifty thousand calories and making a baby the commitment of one or 2000 calories a day in lactation and, um, and then, and then on the long term scale, um, you know, we invest a lot in the success. We're not E. coli. We don't just like make a billion babies and see which one survives. We make a huge energetic investment, uh, collectively in children. And so, um, if your stress hormones are high, that's saying, well, whatever we do have for energy, we might have these more important things that are come first that we have to deal with before we can make that investment. If we don't have enough energy, then um, it says the same thing on the, on the opposite side of that equation, that we don't have enough energy to deal with whatever um, we might face right now or in the long term. And I think I've seen some I've seen a, uh, a couple papers connecting in anovulatory cycles to hypothyroidism. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, um, you know, stress hormones are sort of on one side of this equation. And uh, you mentioned leptin. I would also put insulin and thyroid hormone on the other side, the, the side of um, saying we have enough energy. Mm -hmm. Stress hormones on the side of saying we don't have enough energy. Um, maybe not because of an energetic deficit, but simply because they're signaling a you know a stressful situation that demands energy, and um, and I think that body fat. So being underweight is a huge. If you look at fertility rates, um, there's some there's some observational data where they just look at under un, the BMI of male and female partners, and basically like. Um, two underweight partners are uh, 
going to be very infertile. But then as you cross a certain BMI threshold, you start to see infertility happen again. And I think that's largely because of resistance to insulin and leptin. Right. Um, you know, the energy is there, but now your defect is you're not perceiving it properly. Um, so yeah, very, uh, very similar thoughts on that. So Jennifer adds, it seems that I simply do not ovulate under stress, but others have a delayed ovulation and a longer cycle. Um, it's probably just a variation of the same response, you think? Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Jennifer, for your question. 